Do you want to learn how to build a 100% efficient basic iron factory? How about a 100% efficient basic copper factory? A 100% efficient basic concrete factory? Maybe a not 100% efficient yet rotor factory? Hello everyone, my name is Sheffrey. Welcome back for episode 4 of the Satisfactory series here on YouTube. Today is for all you builders and beginners out there. We're going to be using the cast screw alternate recipe in this episode. And if you're not using it... Mistake. Thank you for all the support on the series so far. Now let's jump right into it. Alright, it's episode 4. We've recovered from our mistakes on episode 3. This is a very special builder friendly episode. It's pretty much just all building actually. We're going to be building our new iron setup, our new copper setup, and a new concrete setup. Followed by a rotor factory giving us 10 rotors per minute. Uh, but first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to run around and tear down all our old factories. So let's uh, let's get started with that. Hopefully you guys didn't uh, experience too many issues from my mistakes in the last episode. And hopefully the hotfix video may have helped things along as well. I did have somebody who was asking if I have fix miss turned off or not because I am recording this during the holiday event. Um, I do have it turned off for now. Um, just as we're getting started, but if you would, if you guys want me to turn it on in like a couple episodes from now and we can do some, a couple episodes just all based around Fixmas stuff, um, we can do that. Just let me know in the comments down below. But without further ado, let's go tear some stuff down. Factory here. So it turns out we can finally move this box of screws. I was clipping it with the foundation there. We're going to just go ahead and get rid of all this. We'll hold down control so we can kind of group together some dismantle things here. Everything here has got to go. Miner and everything. It's all gone. It's being moved. We're gonna have a lot of boxes to pick up here. Oh! Whoops. I think I accidentally deleted some uh, uh some foundations that I didn't mean to there. So let's just run over here, grab some concrete so we can fix that really quick. Yeah, be careful holding out escape sometimes. Or control, I meant control. Never know what you're going to dismantle. There we go. Fixed it. You could say, I fix it. Sorry. Okay, um, leave the awesome thing there for just for now. Um, I did end up deciding to move the um, iron. F we were going to build the iron factory back there behind the hill, um, but I am actually going to just move it over here and we'll just overclock the two miners instead. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cover these up with foundations. You don't have to do this. You can leave them uncovered if you want. This is just a personal preference. So we're going to grab our 4 meter foundations. We're going to hold down control to snap to that world grid. I'm just going to put one a uh, couple down for now, just across here. I believe I still need to be able to see the node at least a little bit in order to get the miner to snap on top. Okay, let's go over what we're going to need for this build. Um, so we are going to need two miners to combine them together. Uh, we're going to need four smelters seven constructors and six storage bins as well as some splitters mergers and all your conveyor belts and the power poles and, and such so let's go ahead and throw that onto the little side here so we need one two three four smelters are you gonna need whoa we are going to need seven constructors you're gonna need two minor mark ones and organization Six storage bins. Put down our portable miner. Or our miner, I mean. Um, yeah, let's face it directly facing this way. Then this one. We'll get turn it and get it to face me. Oh, I fell. There we go. That way it'll be easy to combine together. Just like that. Take away this one as you don't need it. Perfect. I'm going to fill in the side here because otherwise it looks a little silly. Switch to zoop. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to want to put a merger in front of these two. 
with the output facing coming towards me. Let's line this up with both of these, hopefully. Perfect. Just need Mark 1 belts in between them. Because we're just going to get them both to feed 60. And then we're going to have a Mark 2 belt coming out of the merger. Okay, so now we're going to need about a 9x9 nine nine roughly platform to, to build the actual factory. You know? So we're going to go from here. We're going to go zoop out to 9. And then I'm going to do... How many on this side? 3. So that would be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So, from our merger here, we're going to put a splitter in front of it. We'll put that right... We'll save a little bit of room. We'll put that right in the middle. Right in the middle. Oh, I fell down. Okay, maybe not right in the middle, but a little offset from the middle, closer towards the front. Okay, so now we're going to set up our smelters. We have four each. So over here, we're going to put three. We'll put these right in the middle. Line them up with their inputs. Just shift that a little bit. There we go. Shift it again. Well, I really enjoyed the nudge feature. So we're going to one, two, three smelters here. And then you're going to leave two in between. One, two. Then on the third one. It's going to be our fourth smelter. So now we're going to set up our constructors in front of those. Lining up with this first one, we're going to go put the feet right there. We're going to go one, two, three, four, oops, four, five, six, and seven. I just need more cables for. That's because I haven't torn down the copper factory yet. Okay, so once you got your constructors down, you're going to come on over here. We're going to link these directly together. Conveyor belt mark ones. We're going to set these to do iron ingots. Realize that I didn't do that yet. Haven't drank enough of this, drank enough of this coffee yet. So these ones are going to be doing iron plates. So 30 per minute, 30 per minute. No overclocking required there. And then out of this third constructor, we're actually going to be putting a splitter. Oh, my furnace is offline. That's why. I was like, this should line up perfectly. There we go. Now we can put a splitter in. You can actually just put it right in the middle here. Mark one belt. Oh, I put the input facing the wrong way. Input coming from this way. Lined up with those machines. Mark one belt, and this is going to be our iron rods. One goes to there. We'll feed this machine as well. Set these to iron rods. These only need 15 per minute. Which gets fed from this smelter. Now this smelter over here is going to feed these three machines for screws. So we're going to want to put another splitter. Right here in the middle with the input coming from the smelter. Connect that up. And then mark one belts into all the constructors. Now the reason we're doing this is because we have the cast screws recipe. So we can have this smelter feeding 30 per minute. You go to these constructors cast screw recipe. So we have 12 and a half per minute there. 12 and a half per minute there. And 
and 12 and a half per minute there. So we're actually just going to downclock all of these to be only doing 10 per minute. So it's actually going to be a little bit more ingots than we can provide. So we're just going to downclock this so that only, they only take t uh, 10 per minute on each one. So we're going to turn our target production rate down to 40 screws per minute or 80% on each machine. There we go. So now we'll come around to the back. We're going to start putting in all our storage boxes. We will need two storage boxes for iron plates. Can line that up right there. Although I'm actually going to push them a little further out. And the reason I do that is because later on, I won't, so I don't have to move them when we have smart splitters. We're going to want to start sinking all of our overflow um, into the awesome sink. We can use overflow on the smart splitters to send them off this line once these boxes are full. So in order to make sure I can fit all that, I tend to put them just a little bit further away. So I'm going to keep it lined up. I'm going to put it out on the end here. One. And two. So that'll be for our iron plates. Box number one. Box number two. Now, later on, I'll actually end up combining these bolts together and then splitting them off. So now we got our two boxes for our rods. And our two boxes for our screws. last two so we're gonna go into a merger with the output facing towards me here mark one belts in between them there we go now we just have to hook power up to everybody Power poles in between everyone. Keep this nice and clean. I think I can do this easier. I'll just drag, drag the power lines so that they're already connected. I just have to connect these ones. Okay, now we'll connect all our constructors. Oh, I need one more over here. One more on this side. It's going to clip off the side just for now. It's okay. Just in keeping this nice and clean. Now we're going to run power back to our smelters. One for you. Right there. Right there. Right there. And we're going to have to move the storage box again. Can I tuck this in here? There we go. 
Connect up our furnaces. And then connect up our miners. Drag a line over from this one. One to you, and one to you. Okay, now let's connect these up. We're gonna mark two belt between these. We're gonna need splitters with the output facing where we're coming from. The input, I, I mean, sorry. And those up like that. You can save a splitter here. There's a mark one belt by the time we get here. Mark one belts between these. Mark two belt between your splitters here along the manifold line. And just a mark one belt going this way. Okay. So I should honestly be able to pre-fill a bunch of these machines. Oh, I forgot to set these to iron ingots as well. There we go. Let's put 50 in each of these. Just so they can preload things a little bit for us. Okay, now I'm going to need to bring some power slugs over because these are, uh, these were immune. Now I'm going to need to bring some power slugs over because these were impure nodes. So these are only going to be putting out 30 per minute right now and I need to make them put out 60 per minute. Okay, now I'm just going to want to hook the power up so we can preload with these miners. We're going to get these going first. We're going to drag some power lines over here. Connect up to this main line here. Disconnect the main line from everything else for now. So I only want to kick on one thing at a time. And then I believe I need to hook this wire back up to the coal power. Yes, right here. Where's our power connection? One of those. There we go. So power output should now be on for the miners. Excellent. They're going to start getting things filled up for us. I'll come back and I'll connect these wires back together and that should fire up the rest of the system. All right, we're going to kick it on. Three, two, one. Okay, we should be able to let this run for a little bit. Everything should start to fill up. This is a less of a manifold line and a good even split line on these, so everything should be running here at 100% efficiency within a few minutes. Let's go get started tearing down our copper. Okay, I don't know why we just get these beautiful sunrises right as we're coming to the copper base. But anyway, we're going to get this, tar get this teardown started on this base. Okay, we're back. My mess has been cleaned up. Let's put this together. So we're going to start right out with some foundations. Snap onto the world grid. Just like that. Do a little 2 by 3 Production, minor mark one, return it towards me. Now for the copper, I'm gonna need a little bit more space. So I'm gonna go with a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. So we're gonna make that 10. Which I don't think I need to be that wide. Let's go, let's go eight. 
Let's go 8 by 10. So this is starting with 1, so we only need 9. There we go. Grab some more plates. Tearing down a whole starter factory takes up a lot of inventory space. So get those built out. Going out nine on each one. That gives us our eight by ten. So same thing here. We're gonna put two power shards in here. Overclock this to give us 120 per minute. Now that we have coal, I'm a, I'm a lot more comfortable overclocking things. All right, let's get started with the smelters. So for this one's gonna be a little bit different. Oh, let me do. So there we go. Okay, let's get started with the smelters. For this one's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna get one smelter here. Same overhang as the last time. One. Then we're gonna go one space in between. Another smelter. Oops. Left one over there. We're going to go another space in between. Another smelter. Never finished my uh, platform. And the last smelter on the end. These two smelters are going to be taking care of our copper sheets. These two smelters are going to be taking care of wires and cables. All right, so I messed up a little bit there. We're going to be doing our constructors next. So we're going to be putting four constructors here. One, two, three, and four. These are all going to be set to do copper wire. We're going to put a splitter in front of each of these smelters. That's not a splitter, that's a constructor. There we go. Right in the middle there. Mark one lines in between everything. And then same over here. We have our splitter. Feeding both machines. And everybody should be putting output 30 copper wire per minute. And if I didn't mention already, make sure you select these to do copper ingots. Okay, so next I'm going to want to connect these these four constructors together. The two each. And I'll merger in front of these with the output coming towards me. Another one here. Same thing, output coming towards me. This will give us two lines of 60 copper wire each. Did I do that right? Yes, I did. Okay. Nice clean 90 degree turns. This one I did not do right. That's why. I was like, something's throwing me off over here. Soft clipping's okay. You can also get rid of those supports if you want to. So now in front of these two, we're going to add one more constructor. Right here. The mark one line. This is going to make cables. So now we have a line of copper wire, a line of cables. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to do our copper sheets. This is going to be our remaining three constructors. So we're going to go one, two, three. We're going to have a merger in front of this one with the output facing into the machine. We're going to have a splitter in front of the other two. Can't tell what that's connected or what that's trying to line up with. Here we go. Same with over here. 
Mark one belts between here. Mark one belts between all these machines. Now this is going to give me 60 copper ingots per minute. Splitting off. So we'll set these all to do copper sheets. There we go. So we need 20 copper ingots per minute. We have three machines. We should be getting 60 copper ingots per minute from both. Okay, so now we just need to connect the... All right, we actually need to put a splitter here. One more splitter. It's going to feed all, all of our machines here. Oh, it's going to be tight. Okay, I didn't plan this one the best, but... Then we're going to need Mark II belts between... Oops, I can put it, yeah. Well, mark two belts between everything along here. This could be a mark one belt going to this machine over here. This can be a mark one belt over here connecting from this splitter to this machine. Mark two. There we go. Connect these with the Mark 1 belt into all these furnaces, smelters, whatever you want to call them. Another splitter here. Mark 2 belt. Mark 1 belt. And you can do Mark 1 belt on the end here as well. Just do a Mark 2 belt from the miner into the first splitter. And then we just have to connect everything up, connect everything up to the power. Oh, that's not a 90 degree turn. Thought they were going to sneak one past me. Okay, so now we just need to add power to everybody. So we're going to go... One power pull in, and then we'll switch to dragging off of it. Oh, that was actually the wrong one. That one goes to the end here. Connect up to you. This is also actually in the wrong place, I just realized. Oops. We want it to be on the left side of the smelter so you can get it that nice clean connection right there. So the next one's going to be connected to that smelter. And this smelter on the very end. Now we're going to need to run power to all our constructors there. So we're going to drag one more power pole off to the side. One there. And in between everybody. Should be a nice opening. I missed. That was embarrassing. Hook up all our constructors here. going to have to run a line to this one constructor here. So we'll bring a power pole out. And over. Now 
we just have to have storage boxes for everybody. So we've got two storage boxes for rods. We've got two storage boxes for plates. Okay, we've got two storage boxes for cables. Two storage boxes for copper wire. And two storage boxes for our copper sheets. So we're just going to go ahead and connect all these up. We need a splitter in front of this. Just mark one belts in between. You could obviously just do one storage box for each one if you want. I just do two because it makes back um, keeping them from backing up a little bit easier. Gives me a little bit more free time. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to put a splitter in front of this box. Mark one belts feeding in. Then we're actually going to need one line. We have to do this into a merger and a splitter. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a merger in front of the middle one with the output facing towards me. Connect all these up with Mark 1 belts. And then in front of this box, we will do our splitter. Continue with Mark 1 belts because we're not moving any more than 60 items per minute. And there we go. So now we should just have to power this on. We'll preload our copper line. We just disconnect from here. I believe that should work. And then we're also going to need a power line for the miner. I want to connect in for that. Um, if I do it from here, it's, the problem is the belt is right there. So let's go. This one's not going to be quite as clean. We'll connect that to there. So first we got to hook... Now that should fire up and preload all our copper ore. Make sure I turned all these machines on. Copper wire, copper sheets. Did I set this to do cables? The real question. I did. Okay. So that is the entire copper setup. You could definitely save yourself a little bit of space here. If you want to squeeze things a little bit closer together. Wanted to keep it a little bit more spread out so it might be easier to follow along for anyone who's just beginning this. All right, we're going to get this copper preloaded up. We're going to throw some ingots in because I already have a whole bunch when I was tearing this down. This should help get things backed up immediately. Okay, let's connect the power line in. For all the smelters. Which 
How's everything moving along nicely? This might need a minute to get filled up. Oh no, it seems okay already because we already have some backup from the copper, copper ingots. So now we'll connect these two back together. I should power everything up. And the copper factory is back in business. Wow, I haven't been updating our to-do list this whole time. Hold, please. Okay, look at that. Our to-do list is updated and ready to go. So now we're just going to go ahead over and build our new concrete line. Okay, the easiest one of all. Concrete. So all we're going to need is we're going to need one miner mark one. We're going to need three constructors. And we're going to need two storage containers. That's it. Okay, so I actually end up just turning the platform a little bit so that we're actually going to be facing towards the poison cloud here. So now we're going to put down our miner mark one. We're going to put a splitter in front of that. Connect it up with a Mark II conveyor belt. And since this is just a normal node, I'm going to overclock this to 120 per minute. Obviously, if you're using a pure node, you can skip that step. Now I'm going to add... You are so lucky that you found this most valuable artifact. Hello? Where is it? Oh, it's over there. Um, okay, so we're going to put down our three constructors. Maybe leave me alone for a minute. Okay, and then... This isn't going to line up nicely, is it? I got this. We can do it. We're smart. We're smart people, right? That'll be a little bent. That's okay. I'd rather have that bent a little bit and these nice and clean. Okay, so each of these is going to want 45 per minute. Now, obviously, I can't move that many. Unless I overclock it even more. So in fact, what I'm actually just going to do is I'm going to dial these all down to only do 40 per minute. So that 120 will split between these three machines, no problem. So there we go, I just did some quick math for you guys. It is 13.33 per minute, or a clock speed of 88.8889%. Leave you 40 limestone per minute. I'm actually just gonna copy these settings from this one. Paste on here. And paste on here. So now we should only be using 120 limestone per minute. We'll get about 36 concrete per minute out of it. Add a few more foundations on the end. Get rid of these leaves. How am I going to split this? Let's go... Actually, let's do three storage bins on this one. Everyone gets their own storage bin. Make it nicer. So, storage bin for you. Storage bin for you. Storage bin for you. Mark one belts. Should have no backing up issues from this. We'll put in our power. One. Two. Three. Oh, whoops. This went. Those are in the wrong spot. Doesn't need to actually come out on this one. Misplaced those. They're like behind the machine. That's better. So 
a little forward on these ones. I'm sure you guys can fix that if you want. Connect our machines up. Connect one over to the miner. And then now we're just going to have to connect this into the main power line. Let's take a line from over here and drag it off in this direction. Where can I easily connect in here? Um, if I go like right here and then I'm going to give myself a power pull up top. We'll probably readjust these later on. But for now, this should be all our new basic factories good to go. We'll be adding smart splitters and awesome things down the line, but this is pretty much it until we move on to the next step of the game. This should carry us through pretty much every milestone we're going to need for a little bit, including, uh, well, plus the rotor factor we're going to need, but. Okay, so we're going to bring a power pole up here, connect it into you. But I don't want it to be ugly. There we go. Concrete line should now be added in. Let's go make sure that's working. It is not because I did not select concrete on any of the constructors. Oh wait, no. No, I did. It's just waiting for the limestone. Yeah, yeah. We're just waiting for the limestone to go. Okay. Yep, that's all fine. Probably even have some limestone I can feed these with. Get them preloaded a little bit. Preload them all with concrete. That'll back them up a little bit. Okay, that's our new concrete line set up. All of these are fully 100% efficient, which will give us a nice, clean line on our power, our power poles. Let's check in on that, shall we? May need a few seconds to get every, all the machines up and running properly. Okay, so we kicked those, this machine on. This would be kicking on the concrete line. This would be going as they fill up, right? Nope, that one's, those are all working just fine. So if anything's going out right now, it's not that. Okay, it doesn't look like anything's actually going out right now. Let's go check. I found the culprit. Sorry, I forgot. You actually need to do a Mark II belt on your screw line here. And you're combining these two screws together because you're going to be making 80 screws per minute. Just a Mark I belt is not okay. So you actually need to conveyor belt Mark II. That's my mistake again. Sorry about that, guys. Hopefully you, uh... Hopefully you caught that yourselves. And that should balance everything back out perfectly. There we go. Now we have a perfectly balanced line once again. Okay, so now we're moving on to our rotor factory. I think in order to do that, it might actually be finally time to move our hub. So we're going to hop on down here. We actually only need a 13 by 6 platform for this. Should be making us about 10 rotors per minute. The whole thing is actually going to need 94 megawatts of power. So we have plenty of power to play with. This is not connected to anything. Why is that? Oh, right. I haven't connected into the main line yet. There we go. We have plenty of power to play with. We have 300 megawatts to play with right now. Let me add another 94. And that's going to be everything we're going to need to get us into the steel production. Yeah, let's go ahead and move this, this hub. We're going to move it up on top of the hill here so it's out of our way. Dismantle that.
All right, here we are up on the hill. I built a little platform right next to this little pond. And we'll put on our hub here. Facing oh, about like this direction. I don't have to be in anywhere, anywhere particular. I'll bring everything else up here as well. I'll bring the, the ma'am, the awesome sink, the awesome shop, all that sort of stuff. We'll move that up onto a nice platform up here. This will be sort of our main base area. Okay, here we have our 13 by 6 platform. Let's go over what we're going to need for the build. We are going to need four smelters, ten constructors, three assemblers, three storage bins, and then we're going to go to logistics. I actually counted these out as well for you guys this time. For mergers, we're going to need 15 mergers. We're going to need, oops, we're going to need 16 splitters. We're going to need four conveyor belt mark two lifts. And then a bunch of power poles, power lines, um, mark one and two conveyor belts as well. Now, eventually this, the way I built this wasn't, um, I built this in mind that once we get conveyor belt mark three with steel production, this will be hundred percent efficient. So this is actually going to run at not at hundred percent efficiency for now. There are definitely other builds for this that you can set up right now that will give you hundred percent efficiency without mark three. Um, but the way I designed this, uh, I thought it looked pretty cool and really clean. Um, it just required Mark III belts. So I decided to go with it and we should be at Mark III belts soon enough that we can uh, get this machine up and running in 100% efficiency. Okay, we got everything we need. Let's get started. So we're gonna be going off of that iron node right there. We're going to start from here. We'll put our four smelters in. One, two, three, four. I put this one in the wrong spot. There we go. Right in the middle. So it's hard because I'm going to disconnect these for now just so it makes this a little easier to figure out. Um, so on your six wide platform, on one and six, you're going to skip. Then you put the smelters in the middle. Okay, so now we're just going to do our constructors. We're going to start right here. From this spot, uh, third one in, in front of the second smelter. I'm going to have to nudge that a little bit. There we go. Oh, that's too far. Perfect. I want the output coming right over the grate on the back. So we're going to do five of the one, two, three, four, five constructors there. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side here. Make sure that's where I want it to be. Output coming out over the grate. Right. I want these to be equal distance apart. So the white line on the input covers up the grate. Okay, so it's going to be right there. So one, two, three, four, five. So now I'm going to add a merger right here with the output facing towards me right in the middle, hopefully. I said right in the middle. There we go. You know, mark one belt from each smelter into that uh, merger. No, why not? Yeah, output facing this way. Why don't you want to let me connect in? 
Oh, I faced my miners the wrong way. <laughs> That'll do it. Or my smelters the wrong way, sorry. Okay. Attempt number two with the smelters. We got... One... Two... Three... Four. And I faced them the wrong way again. <laughs> Here we go now. One. Two. Three. And four. All facing the correct direction this time. Merger lines. We need a merger in front of this one as well, with the output facing towards me. Mark one belts in between there. Mark one belts in between here because this is only going to be putting out 60. This is 30 and 30. So this belt would be 60. Now, this is going to be 60 as well. So this is where it's going to start becoming Mark II belts. So we're going to want to put a splitter in front of e in between each of the constructors. The out or the input facing towards me here. Should be able to line all these up. Mark one belts feeding each machine. Oops. But mark two belts in between every splitter. There we go. Now, before I hook these up together, I'm actually just going to let this get backed up a little bit. Um, this will take quite a while in order for this to balance out properly. So you're going to want to pre able to preload a few of these machines, um, mainly the screws side. So this entire side is going to be set to our cast screws recipe. So we need one, two, three, four, five, all doing cast screws. And then these ones are going to be set to do rods. So back here in front of the smelters, I forgot to put in the, sm in the splitters. We're going to put a splitter in for each one with the input coming from this side here. That's not in the middle. There we go. Input coming from this way. Input coming from this way. And then for the first one here, Actually, wait, no, since it's over there, let's do it actually the opposite direction. Let's go conveyor splitter, but I want the input facing from the back here. And we'll turn this way and the input will go facing away from us. I should be able to do mark one belts on each one. with mark two belts in between each litter. Your typical manifold line. Now I'm just going to put some foundations back here. Just for the miner to sit on. We'll put our miner mark one up top. We have to be able to see the node. There it is. Not going to sit exactly straight, so we'll just do the best we can here. I believe they answered why they did it this way once is because when they put the all the nodes down, the world grid didn't exist. Wait, did I? Not? Is this not snapped to the world grid? 
It is. Oh, I must not have snapped these ones to the world grid. Okay. I thought I did. Either way, it's actually pretty easy to fix. We go like that. Kind of wondered why I was up so high. There we go. Okay, so now that we learned where that's actually going to go, we're going to swap these around. We should be able to have our splitter feed right in here. The input facing towards us. Another one facing this way. Mark two belts in between. The auto save lag is real. Mark one belt going to this one. And we're just going to rehook this back up because sometimes it gives me an issue where it doesn't actually connect the lines. So there we go. Now we should be able to feed this one with a Mark II belt directly into here. Do I like that? Absolutely not. So we're going to go straight out like this. And once we get nice and close to the machine, we'll hook it up like that. I think this is just a crate full of rods and plates. It is. I'll have to move the rest of that later. So we're going to have to overclog this one as well. Give me 120 iron ore per minute. And then here's where we're going to be putting in a bunch of mergers. We're going to five, uh, hit our five hotkey. I want the output green arrows to be facing down the line here. So we're going to put one in front of every constructor here. Do the same on the other side. You can skip the first one. We go one, two, three, and four. And you can do mark one belts from the machines into the mergers. Same with these ones. Same thing here on the other side, as these are only going to be putting out 50 screws per minute. Mark 1 belts can feed into there. And then for now, these are going to be Mark 2 belts. However, eventually they're going to need to be Mark 3. Same thing with the lifts as well. The conveyor lifts are going to need to be Mark 3 as well. The uh, iron rod line can actually all be Mark 1 belts, as you'll never be moving more than 60 iron rods per minute. So it's really just the screw side that's going to need balancing once we get Mark 3 belts. Okay, so now we're moving on to the assemblers. We're going to go ahead and move up in front of the constructors here and grab our three assemblers. Each one is going to line up an input with the out, with the exit of the mergers. I'm going to line up the first input on the left there. Go one. Up to the other one here as well for these screws. I guess the screws one doesn't matter. It's really just the first one that needs to line up. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I actually split the assemblers up a little bit to uh, make them a little bit more even. We got the first one. So I placed the first one right in the middle, and then I just slid each one over by four notches, um, and it lines it up perfectly with this um, this merger here, as well as the merger on the other side, and then you get this one right in the middle. So, now we're going to have to set up our manifold lines for feeding our assemblers. So, one of these is going to go along the bottom, and one of these is going to go along the top. So, the first one we'll do is the rods. So, we're going to set up a splitter 
right here with the input facing towards the merger here. Put that right in the middle. Put another one here, but we're going to turn the input, face it back towards us. And we do the same thing here. It just keeps it nice and clean if I put one over here. Mark one belt between everybody. And mark one belt into the machines. Okay, so now I'm going to be adding some splitters for the screws line. But I'm going to have to make sure I turn. Oh, I'm going to actually have to take these belts out first, just to make it a little easier on ourselves. Grab our splitters. Make sure the input is facing off to the right. We're going to go one, two. Do the same thing here. We go one, two. Oops. I'm actually gonna move these. I I actually like it better with lifts, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move these up a little bit. So we're gonna go one, two, three. We're gonna go one, two, three, making sure our input is coming from the the right hand side and then for this one we're going to make sure our input is coming from the back two three so now we're going to connect these higher up ones with mark two belts eventually again these are going to become mark three belts now we can connect up the lower ones with the Mark 1 belts. And here's where we're going to need some lifts. So we're going to go to Logistics. Now compare, and again, these are going to become Mark 3 eventually. We're going to make sure those face the correct direction. That actually snaps in perfectly. And then we're going to make sure we hit R to make this reversed, because we're going to want to bring things down. There we go. That should also perfectly snap in together. I don't think I have to add any belts in. So now we're going to add in Mark two lifts, bring you, make sure they're reversed. That is clearly not in the correct position. So we'll have to fix that. Again, making sure it's facing towards me. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes you make a little goofy mistake. We're just going to fix that really quick. Now, why is that not being nice? What's going on here? You're in line. You're in line. Why did that not, uh... Why is this being so finicky? I don't understand. What's going on? Why is it not flipping to this other side? <laughs> There we go. That was that was very strange. I've never seen it do that before. Everything lined up with each other? It should be. Yeah. Yeah, it was just being weird. Okay, so now we'll do a third one over here. Make sure it's reversed. See, this one's working just fine. Okay, that is all the manifold lines set up and all the conveyor belts set up. We're going to set these to do rotors.
And this first one in the line of screws, at least, we are going to uh, set this down to do only do two per minute. So it should back up faster and send more screws down the line. It's 100, so 250. So obviously we need 250 screws per minute. We can't carry that on our belts at the moment, but we do have five constructors making 250 screws per minute. So eventually this will be, like I said, 100% efficient. So now we just need to run power to everything. Make sure we have our recipes set up. I believe we do. Run power to everybody and we can kick this thing on. I'm going to put the power poles at the back here. Hopefully they let me snap them in easily. All right, I can do this much easier. If we just uh, start from power lines, it'll automatically connect all those for me. So that's for all our constructors. All our screw constructors, that is. And we'll just hop up here. We'll run a power line across. Um, we'll just do one across like that. And where are the connectors for these ones? Kind of off the front. It's going to be a little not as nice looking. I mean, it still will, but. I think that one gets it, no problem. And then out on the end here. Connect that one in. That's all our assemblers connected. Got all our screws connected here. I'm just gonna do this. It's not gonna look as, it could look as clean, but then I don't have this one coming across. There we go. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Put that one there. Connect that to there. Oops. <laughs> I guess I made a random one. There we go. Connect you into there. I'm going to set up these lines. A little ways back. Not as tight and clean, but... Again, you can kind of set this up however you... Like, power you can set up however you like. Whatever makes you happy. Okay, those are all connected. Now, I actually have quite a few things to underclock in this line, which is going to end up saving us a lot of power in the long run. So we're going to start with the miner. The miner, I only want it to make 112.5 parts per minute. Just 187.5%. Three of the miners. I'm going to want to down clock to 27 and a half per minute. 27.5. Copy the settings. So we paste those into there. Then we're going to want to come to our first rod constructor here. We're going to turn this down to five per minute. We're going to come to our next two constructors. We're going to turn these down to seven and a half per minute. Now, the reason I did two at seven and a half per minute, obviously you could just take out a constructor and only do four constructors to make this even smaller. However, I wanted uh, an exact even split of five down each line. So I added one more constructor and I just down clock them to seven and a half percent. Or sorry, I download down clock them to 7.5 per minute, which is 50%. Oh, 
All right, everyone's all backed up. It's finally time to hook up this line right here. We're gonna set a Mark II belt in. Start feeding all our machines here. And now we know it's not gonna be 100% efficient for until we get Mark III belts, so we're not too worried about it. And it's, it's either way, it is gonna take quite a bit of time to back everything up. So we'll let that go for now. We'll take Rotor Factory off our to-do list for today. And that's gonna bring us to the end of our building for today's episode. Okay, we got a few minutes left of the episode here, so I think now that we've got everything done on our to-do list, we'll just do a quick little run around. We'll see if we can find some power slugs, see if we can find more crash ship pods we can mark. I'll just throw it together in a little montage here at the end for you guys. Okay, we are back over at the base now, and I realized I totally forgot to put on the storage bins. So let's go ahead and do that real, really quick. We got a storage bin for you. We got a storage bin for you. We got a storage bin for you. Mark one belts going in between them. Perfect. Okay, so that's going to be where we end off the episode, guys. Like, I appreciate you guys being here for another episode. Um, hopefully, you were able to follow along with the building, or you were just having some fun building on your own with me in the background. Either way, I appreciate you guys enjoying the episode. If you got any suggestions, any comments, any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next one.